Think about the scenarios described in the reading, Surviving in the Information Age. In one scenario, set in 1967, a student was unable to find information about a topic of interest. In the second scenario, set in the present day, a student found a large amount of information in a variety of formats. The second scenario may initially appear advantageous, but the article makes the point that in both scenarios, the student's questions were largely unanswered. In the first case, this was because information was not available, and in the second case, because the student was so inundated with information that he was unable to evaluate, manage, and use the information effectively. This is a common situation in today's schools. Students have access to great information sources, but often fail to learn from these sources because they do not have the skills needed to find, analyze, synthesize, and evaluate information. Students must be taught how to search effectively. Students may encounter resources that are unreliable, outdated, biased, or inaccurate, and therefore must be taught how to determine credibility of resources. In this module, we will discuss varying degrees of scaffolding that you can provide to your students to ensure successful internet research. The most structured method of guiding students in internet use is to supply resources for them. You may find a limited number of credible websites and provide these to your students. This is a good strategy for a few reasons. If you are working with young students, this may be the most effective way to use the internet. If you are pressed for time, this may also be a useful strategy, as it eliminates the need for time spent searching and evaluating resources. This may also be effective if the problem that has been identified is one with a single correct answer. In this case, multiple sources may be unnecessary. If any of these situations apply to the activity that you are planning, then there are many ways for you to allow for structured internet experience for your students. Porta Portal is a website designed for teachers in which they can set up an account and list resources for their students. This eliminates time that may be needed for students to type in URLs that are often lengthy and allow for mistakes. Porta Portal also allows teachers to categorize the websites so that students know exactly where to look to solve a specific problem. Some teachers may choose to use a blog or wiki in a similar way by simply listing resources that are appropriate for students to use in various categories. The next level of scaffolding is to create a customized search engine through an application such as Google Co-op. The customized search engine allows students access to teacher-identified resources, but also allows for search engine capability. In this situation, a teacher would visit the Google Co-op website and copy-paste URLs for websites that have been identified as effective by the teacher. Students will be provided with a link to the customized search engine and would be able to use the Google search feature but the search engine would only access the websites that were previously identified by the teacher. This may be useful if you want to provide a structured experience for your students, but find that there are many websites that you would like your students to utilize. For example, if you have created a portal portal site for your students, but find that one category of resources has more than 10 resources, then you may find that it is ineffective for your students to use all of them without a search engine. In this case, you may choose to copy-paste those resources into a customized search engine so that students can more quickly and easily access the information that they need. As an alternative to Porta Portal, a customized search engine will also allow you to discuss search terms with your students. If you have young students who are inexperienced with internet searches, then this may be an effective way to introduce them to effective searching while also ensuring that the resources they access are credible. If you would like to remove another layer of structure, you may choose to use a kid-friendly search engine. Popular search engines such as Yahoo and Ask Jeeves offer kid-friendly versions. Each kid-friendly search engine may use different criteria to evaluate the websites it accesses, so check the FAQ section of the search engine to find out exactly how it works. The idea behind these search engines is that every website that it accesses has been reviewed by a real human being. The search engine should not access inappropriate or unsafe materials. Some search engines also specify websites that are credible for school projects, so there is less chance that kids will access inaccurate or outdated materials. Using these kid-friendly search engines is typically a great choice for student research, but they are geared towards students up to the age of 12. So if your students are older or more advanced, then the material access may not be at a high enough level for your students. The least structured form of internet search is of course an open search through a search engine such as Google. Utilizing search engines in this way is an important skill that is useful for students to practice with guidance from an experienced instructor. As mentioned previously, 
While there is a lot of useful information on the web, students may access information that is unreliable, outdated, biased, or inaccurate. It is important that you assist students in identifying appropriate information. There are a number of checklists available online, which are linked in the resources section of this module. I recommend that you refer to one of these, but revise it to be age appropriate for your students and appropriate to the specific research that your students are doing. For example, many generic checklists may direct the user to check when the information was last updated. While this may be important if students are researching the Human Genome Project, for example, it may also be unrelated if the topic of research is 19th century literature, as this information typically has not changed much in re recent years. In addition, do not simply provide the checklist without explanation. For example, many checklists direct the user to look at the domain of the site, such as .edu, .gov, or .com. While this may be helpful when combined with other techniques, all university students typically may create a site with the domain .edu. So while this may be evidence of credibility, someone who is not an expert in that field may also have created the site. You should discuss this with your students. As an alternative to providing a checklist to your students, you may also choose to enlist them in creating a checklist as part of a discussion about the characteristics of a credible site. One final consideration in effective use of the internet resources is collaboration in finding and utilizing resources. Social bookmarking sites such as Delicious can be utilized to aid students and teachers in sharing resources. Social bookmarking sites allow a user to tag resources that they have found to be useful. Students can then become fans of their teacher and classmates, accessing those people's tagged resources. Using social bookmarking can save time and direct students to appropriate resources because they are able to utilize the searches of their classmates. I have used this as a teacher by tagging some appropriate resources to get my students started. They become fans of mine and of each other. After accessing my resources, students may search for resources of their own, and when they tag these resources, then their classmates will be able to see what they have tagged. When a resource is tagged, the user will have access to a notes field. A good way to combine this with the reliability resource checklist is to have students describe in the notes field why they feel this is a credible source based on the checklist that was provided or created in class. This saves students time by eliminating the need for multiple students in the class to review the same resource. This can also serve as a formative assessment for teachers as they can ensure that their students are thinking about the credibility of the resources they are using. In addition, the teacher can see which resources his or her students are using so that if the students are getting off track in their research, they can quickly be redirected toward an effective search. More information about social bookmarking is provided in the social bookmarking module of this site.